Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell and welcome back to 10,000 and Below, where I go through the, all the board games on BoardGameGeek.com that are ranked 10,000 and less. And I really think there's some gems and things to be found in there. Now, I'm doing this on the fly as it will. I'm going to be just looking at these for the first time along with you. Uh, we'll take a look and see if they're any good. Who knows? We're about to find out. So we'll start here with the first one, we're at 10,201, the Battle of Nations, the Encirclement at Leipzig, 16 to 19 October 1893, which came out in 1975, a year before I was born, and you can definitely tell by this title that the people who buy this game are the people who are going to buy this game. Um, it's an interesting, you know, time of history, but woo, that is 1973 components for sure, with a map to match and components. So. There you have it. Uh, all right. Dino Dunk is the next one on here. Now, this one only has 47 ratings. This one was at Gen Con. I, I know it was at Gen Con in 2018. I want to say I saw him again in 2019. This is a flicking game. And in this game, each player has a team of dinosaurs who are playing basketball, despite having very short arms, but eh, go figure. Uh, you will be flicking back and forth, trying to get as close to the opponent's uh, volcano as you can, and you, each of your different dinosaurs that you pick has different sizes and different special abilities. It's a fun little two-player game. Uh, Pathogenesis, second edition. Uh, Talking Tango. Talking Tango, and I've dropped Talking Tango to a six, but Talking Tango, I, I, I know, I remember this one distinctly. I bought this at a Barnes & Noble's, Barnes & Noble's clearance sale. Now, this was a game from 2000. I reviewed it in 2009, so I probably got it somewhere around there. And this was this is a game in which you are giving clues to other people, and you're just doing every other word. So if you and I need to get someone to guess lion, I would say, uh, you would say animal that lives in the I was about to say jungle, but lions don't live in a jungle necessarily. Anyhow, um, you, so you go back and forth, and it's just silliness there. You're just trying to get people to guess. That's the whole concept of the game, and I found it to be enjoyable. Probably wouldn't play it as much today. Build a Cure Among Thieves. So Among Thieves was the winner at Geekway to the West, if I'm remembering correctly, because I know that uh, Indie Boards and Cards... Uh, publishes the winner maybe it wasn't among thieves but uh it's prisoner's dilemma to some degree you're offering to go along with the heist master i thought this was an interesting game i reviewed it a year ago uh and but the the game did not play out as well as i want to you're trying to convince someone to go with you but at the end of the day the negotiations weren't as interesting as i wanted them to be really cool cover and cards though the Stars Align, Coup Deluxe Mobile Edition. All right, well, I like Coup. Ooh, that's a pretty version of Coup. This is uh, from Indie Boards and Cards. I don't know that I've ever seen this version of Coup. I like the artwork in it, though. Not, that's the only really good picture of it. This is from 2015. All righty. Well, here's one that has a lot of ratings, and it's still ranked fairly low, and that's Chairs. Chairs is a stacking game. I, I've not played it, but I know basically how it works. It has a bunch of cool little chairs. This is one of those games that if I saw it on discount, I would probably get it and play it with my kids. And I'm pretty sure it's come out in many different versions. I've seen it. Well, that kid really stacked the chairs high. I've seen it. It just looks good. looks like a work of art, but it's probably just stacking. Let's see, double quick, Sequence for Kids. Now, Sequence is a game that's very, very popular. I did not know there was a kids version. I'm assuming uh, instead of cards, they're just pictures of animals. And are you still using, yep, those little plastic poker chips to put on them? Okay, well, if you like Sequence, I guess I'm kind of ambivalent on that myself. Draco Mundus. This is from 2006. Looks like I rated it in 2011. Man, this is one of those ones. It's from Christopher Bollinger, Asmodee. And I am struggling to remember how this game played at all. 
I'd have to go back and watch my own review. So that doesn't bode well a decade ago. If I remember correctly, you're just putting tiles out and then flipping them over and they're attacking each other. Mm. Forgettable, obviously. All right, some more war games. Credit Mobilier. Credit Mobilier. That's from Max Michael. Okay, so Max Michael has designed several other games. Uh, let's see if you recognize any of the games that he has done. Sheepdogs of Pendleton Hill, Book of Dragons, and Panzer Zug. Sheepdogs of Pendleton Hill? Well, wait, we're going to get to that one since it's ranked 10,500. We'll get to that one eventually. Uh, but Max started his own uh, company. He has worked in the past with different people like Martin Wallace and stuff in trains. And so it's no guess then that his game is some sort of train game. Interesting. All right, 50 Clues, The Fate of Leopold. This game has gotten completely destroyed in reviews for being too dark for an escape room style game. I haven't played it yet. Uh, for that reason, I gave it to Z. We'll see. Flip, Philip Football, huh? All right, I gotta look at a game called, huh? Last time we looked at a game called, yay! All right, so, huh? It's a movie that begins with Irish dancing and ends with swimming, huh? Because of a bit of ice. I got it. You're describing things in unusual or entertaining ways. Okay, so there's, that's like a lot of games where you, I, huh? <laughs> Uh, every every picture is a, just another picture of the box cover. All right. Wizard's Gambit. Well, this one I rated a 5, and this was another decade ago. Let's see if I remember how this one played, because it's from Griffin Forge Games. You're putting... Wow. See, this never is really good for a game. When I do my uh, look back, sometimes I have to go back, and people say, do you remember all the games you played? And the answer to that is a resounding... No, sometimes I don't remember this one at all. It doesn't even look familiar. Oh, well. Oz, Rabbit Hunt. Okay, well, this one, same time period, essentially. But this one I do remember because you're going out hunting for rabbits and you're just building this grid of cards out like this and moving around. I think this is one of those ones I can see that it's. I gave it a 6 out of 10, but it looks like if I was reviewing this now, I would probably be less inclined to play this one or be happy with it. This one looks like a cool abstract game, Shiftago. So I'm going to uh, take a look here. Bring up the picture. All right, so Shiftago. I like how these marbles look. This looks really cool. It shows Express, Expert, Extreme. I have no idea what any of these pictures mean. But the concept of this looks really cool. The rules. Marbles are brought into play by sliding them on a the board from any one of the edges. Any marbles already there are pushed one space further along. But you can't make a marble fall off. The game remains. Eh, okay, okay, okay. What are you trying to do in this game? To make a line out of marbles of your color. Okay, it sounds very basic. I would grab a copy of that and play it if I could. Crusoe's Plant. The Lord of the Rings dice building game. Hmm. Here we have one of the most botched games that's ever come out. Lord of the Rings dice building game was a variant from WizKids on Quarriers. I was so excited about this game, but it is virtually unplayable. The rules are horrific. The game is extremely deterministic. It's just bad all around, unfortunately. And the fact that it is this high, I mean, not even lower than this, is very surprising to me. I gave it a four, and I like the theme, I like the dice, I like the designers, I like everything about it, except the game itself. Rumpelstiltskin. All right. Uh, this is from AEG back in the day. Well, those look like Smash Up cards, don't they? This is like a precursor to Smash Up. Huh. They made a bunch of these smaller two-player card games. So this one came out in 2015. Yeah, they had made a pile of two-player card games at this point. I don't know if it was two-player or not, but they made these small card games, and so this must have been part of that line. Midgard the Card Game, Epic PvP Magic, The Incredibles Save the Day. Thank you, Incredibles. Anagrams. I was about to say it's a really boring title, then I realized the game's from 1910. Radiant Offline Battle Arena. 
Uh, that one is on my shelf, I think. Uh, I might get to it eventually. I love Portugal. Okay, I gotta look at that, because that's such a... Ah, oh, look at these people. They're having a great time. I love Portugal. Hmm. Looks looks interesting. All right. This is I, I this is one of the reasons I like looking through these lists, folks, because I like finding games like that. Heist, one team, one mission. Hmm. This one is really fun. Just came out last year. It's a box, then you're pressing things at the top, and you uh, press it when it's your turn, but then you're passing things around, and you're going to have to keep hitting it on your turn. It looks like this here. It's really fun, really silly, has a deterministic thing, and if you win, it opens up and spills out gold bars, which is fun. Mutiny. Mutiny, I believe, is the very first, or one of the first games I played from Kevin Wilson. Kevin Wilson is known for many other games at this point in time. Uh, for a while, he was one of the main designers at Fantasy Flight and developers. And Mutiny is a kind of game that you were basically betting on these pirates that gave you different things. Some pirates would give you rum, some would give you swords, and maps, and different things. I was kind of ho-hum on it compared to many of the other games that came out in the Fantasy Flight Silver line. I do think that my rating of it might go up if I played it now. Tangos. Well, that sounds like a domino game. Oh, this is just Tangrams. All right. Yep, competitive Tangrams. So essentially, there's the picture. Make it out of Tangrams. I like Tangrams a lot. Competitive, not so interested in it. It's really just a puzzle. Grand Fleet, Disaster on K2. Hmm, that's not a place you want to have it. Here's a little game called Roll It. This has 435 ratings. Oh, that's interesting. These pieces, have, they're like dice. Ah, it's from Goliath. Oh, there's a mega version of it. I like that. Um, it's had other names. Where, uh, I'll just roll it, roll it, roll it, roll it, roll it. Huh. Well, I would play that one if I could. Let's see here. Crowbar, Lee Moves North, Trophy Buck, 2011, and Chaos. Both of those I've rated. Trophy Buck is a dice rolling game from Steve Jackson. It is based on zombies. It's pretty much the same thing. I think the zombie theme worked better. I can't believe I'm saying that. Just a push your luck dice pulling game. And Chaos is a very chaotic game from Z-Man Games, which is just too weird, I think, at this point in time. I would probably, I'm going to be getting to the point where I'm going to be doing my 10-year look back at this, and I'll probably drop it one, because I think it's too difficult for people to understand, because it's too chaotic. Where to go, Boot Hill, Piercing the Reich, Pentos. All right, Pentos has 171 ratings. Let's take a look at it. Well, there's not many pictures at all. Special ingredients and actions. You know, uh, we talk a lot. Oh, this is from Bruno Catala. So maybe Z's played this one. Well, Dan King has. He loves uh, Bruno Catala. Hmm. Select an ingredient, switch five ingredients, steal one ingredient, discard five ingredients. All right. I wonder why that one never came to America. Morpheus. Morpheus, once again, I'm going to have to look at the game to see if I can remember how it played. When did this one come out? 2000, 2017. Oh, I remember this one now. This is about the dreams. Uh, I think my board looks slightly different than that one. Yeah, you're making dreams and moving them around. Yeah, it was okay. It was okay. A little maybe too much work moving the stuff around. Hurley Burley, uh, which is made by the same folks who made uh, Coup, the same designer. 1977, I mean, 1777, the year of the hangman. Mm. Gobi Fish Market, Fortress Song God, Stellar Leap. All right, let's take a look at Stellar Leap. This is one. Oh, yes. This is from Weird Giraffe Games. Now, Weird Draft Games makes a lot of cool stuff, and I like the idea of their games. This one felt a little more um, chaotic, I think, than I'd prefer to. You're building this grid here and going around and mining things. There's some interesting ideas here. I just thought it could have been implemented a little bit better, but it wasn't bad. It was, it's a fine game. I just thought it could have been better. 
Here's Formula D, but this is not the Formula D, which we all know and love. But I mean, it's named after Formula D. Uh, it sure looks like it, though, doesn't it? This is the mini release of it. Never mind, this is the Formula D we all know and love. Cool. Up a creek, or up the creek. I wonder if they have a paddle. But that says 404 ratings. Up the creek. Oh, I thought it was a war game. I don't know why I thought it was a war game. Ooh, I do like that artwork a lot. I guess you're making your canoe longer and longer and everybody's in the canoe. Huh. I've never heard of this one. That's why I like, again, looking through these, I'll find games. Rudy Hoffman, who has done several games, Cafe International, Tally Ho. Ah, I see. He's done a lot of cool games. Iron Dream, Defenders of the Realm Battlefields. This was a expansion for Defenders of the Realm. No, this is not. This is a standalone, non-cooperative game. This is one I have not ever played, actually. It sure looks just like Defenders of the Realm, the same artwork, which is not the best. Huh. Well, in the comments, if you ever played that, let me know. It sounds interesting, but I also... I'm not always sure when someone makes a competitive game out of a cooperative experience. Igloo Igloo and Neo Lethabim. We'll take a look at both of these. Igloo Igloo. There's a man versus beast. Oh, this is the Bruno and Bruno game. Bruno Katala and Bruno Faduti. Um, interesting. So, a lot of wooden pieces, fish. These are the tiles of the game. Looks like an abstract strategy game. Huh. I'll have to try this one out someday from Gold Sieber. And then this one, Neo Lithabum. Oh, some caveman style game. And you are making and handing and put. Oh, wow, it's one of these. You put your foot on the table. Definitely, oh, and you're stacking stuff. You know what? I think I have seen this in real life being played at some point. This came out in 1991. So it's a stacking game like this, but you're doing stupid, crazy things meanwhile. All right, cool. Dreams of Tomorrow, I've seen that one. Fluttering Souls, this one I just reviewed a few months ago. It's a two-player butterfly game. Really pretty, just trying to outguess the, uh, you're, it's a little bit of a drafting game and trying to outthink the other person as you draft these butterflies. Uh, Ostraka. Oh, yeah. This one I should actually have rated, I think. This is you ask questions, and then you're going to predict what people say. There's just not a lot of information here. This is a party game that they tried to squeeze into too small of a deck. So we're going to rate that one a 5. Wow, it's been a really long time since I played that one. 2004. It's been a bit. I probably played it very close at that time. Perfect Hotel. Let's take a look at this one. Oh, I do like the artwork on this one from 2017. Wow, that's a classy looking game. Ah, it's from Japan, okay. Um, neat. Oh, I guess Z's played it and liked it. Well, there you go. <laughs> I don't always ask Z everything he's played. Zombies vs. Cheerleaders. Um, eh, I wasn't a big fan of the theme at all. But it's basically one player is playing the, the cheerleaders and the other person is playing the zombies and they're all marching at the cheerleaders. Cheerleaders are trying to fight them off like a tower defense style game. Uh, then we have casting. So casting is a game in which you are trying to, this is from Blue Cocker Games. Casting is a game where you're trying to pick or you're trying to get someone to pick your person. Casting, though, has that problem where you are, it depends, you're going to be judging these people based on how they look on the outside. So you may or may not like that. Super Circles from 2009. All righty. 
Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you're going to be playing a blue four green. Yeah, it's kind of like it's kind of like an Uno style game, and you're just putting the same stuff on top of the same cards as long as something matches. What did I rank that? A six? It's been a while. I might not do that now. One page bulge. I love the name of that. Just a one page uh, little war game. Air cab to the strongest of dungeons. Hike. A hike I reviewed back in 2011. A hiking game. Ah, this is from that, that, that. Hustache games. Yeah, this is one I, I think they made the, what was their, Moustache, they made a, yeah, a rowboat. I remember that because there was a lot of boat type stuff at Gen Con that they were advertising. They really pushed rowboat. And you can see I thought Hike was okay. Taboo, goulash. I got to check out goulash because I just like the idea of goulash. Ugh. All right, this came out in 2001. <laughs> the last game on earth. Um, okay, Wow. When did this game come out? In 2001? That looks like 1972. And finally, the last one here, 4th Street Pro Football. So this is the last one for today's, and we always look at the first and the last, no matter what. And this is a football simulation type thing. All right, well, some people really love these things, I want to say. Is that the only picture of the game on the website? It is. Well... Football simulation, 15 people have commented, 31 have ranked it. There you have it. Well, folks, thanks so much for watching. Uh, as we continue our way down through the 10,000 ranked games and below, I'm Tom Vassell. If you have any comments on these, mention them below. Until next time, this is the Dice Tower.